welcome back to the HCW YouTube channel and welcome back to another Indie Spotlight and we're across the pond again once again um, and we are joined by Michael Monroe the third. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing very well. I'm trying not to say because everyone asks me that question. I always reply with living the dream. So I'm trying not to do that anymore. Uh, I usually say I usually say uh, I'm living the dream. Maybe not mine, but hopefully someone's. Yeah, there's a new one that we've got to work, which um, we've been told today, which is the horror persists, but so do I. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I'm going to take that um, one. So I'm going to try and instill that. Book. Um, for, for anyone that's not watched this before, it's a rip-off of This Is Your Life, where we'll be discussing Malcolm's, like, how he got into wrestling all the way up into what he's doing now, um, which he is coming over to the UK, which we'll be very excited to talk about in a bit. Um, mm -hmm. so, first thing first, um, what's your kind of first wrestling memory? Um, what, what got you into wrestling? Uh, so, uh, I, I was actually born into pro wrestling, uh, I am a third generation wrestler. I used to start by saying I'm Michigan's only third generation wrestler, but that's no longer true because my little brother is a pro wrestler now. Brilliant. So uh, <laughs> he, he soiled it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so uh, I was born into the business. My grandfather wrestled uh, uh, in like the 70s and 80s. My dad all throughout the 90s and still wrestling to this day. Um, so uh, my very first wrestling memory that I can remember is my dad wrestled my grandpa in like 1990, I think nine. Hmm. And uh, it was in a cage match and my mom got involved and my dad pile drove my mom through a table. That's that's I think that's going to be the only time I ever ask that question and get that kind of response. That's that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, that's my first lesson memory. And what was your opinion? Oh <laughs> uh, uh, man, I was like blown away by it uh, <laughs> because like uh, my mom like appeared to be way stronger than me than she had ever appeared because like she just got drove, but she was talking fine after that, and I was like, dude, she's tough. Like, uh, but. Um, just, uh, I instantly fell in love and knew that that, like that place and like this business is exactly what I was supposed to be doing with the rest of my life. So that kind of just solidified it for me. Oh, that's incredible. And I'd like to be, I, I love the name as well. Cause I'm a very, I'm a very historical kind of person. So I like, uh, the Kings and stuff like when you have like Henry the eighth, et cetera, in the UK, it's cool having yeah. Malcolm Monroe the third. Yeah. Um, were you pushed? Did you um, did you always think you were going to be a wrestler, or like, did you were guiding into that, or did they? Um, is it just something they gave you the kind of choice and went, you can do it if you want? It it was kind of like that. My dad didn't think I was going to be a wrestler because like I was just doing other things. Uh, but uh, like I played other sports. I played basketball growing up. Like did a bunch of other stuff, and um. I knew at a really young age that I was going to be a wrestler. And then the fact that my dad didn't think that I was going to be a wrestler made me want to be one even more. So uh, my dad actually didn't even know that I was training to be a wrestler. He didn't find out yeah. that I, I was uh, wrestling until I was fully trained and had been for like months at that point. Okay, that's a valid. I would have expected him to be the one that trained you. So where did you train? Yeah, no. uh, I was trained by Truth Martini at the House of Truth. I was trained by Truth Martini and Jimmy Jacobs. That's incredible. Um, how was that there? Uh, literally uh, one of my favorite places that made me the person that I am today. I, uh, I started training there when I was 11. Um, by the time I was 18, I became a trainer there. And uh, I helped train my little brother at the House of Truth. <laughs> okay. And what's your brother go by wrestling wise? Uh, his name's uh, the second son, Caden Monroe. Um, so when was your first match? Like, um, cause you said you started when you were 11. Yeah. My first match, uh, my first match on a show, I was 12. Mm. Uh, I did a tag match with my dad, uh, against a guy named, uh, Eddie Venom and his tag partner, Jamie Cox. Mm. Um, yeah. So that was fun. Okay, how long ago was that then? Oh uh, man. Fifth. Years ago, wow. Um, and I'm assuming because it, it people are nervous when they like 18, 19 wrestling. Were you were you nervous when you got on your first match? Um, 
I wasn't nervous more so uh, like going into the match. I was more so nervous after the match ended because I was like, I was like, okay, I did it, but like now I have to hear what people thought about it. <laughs> okay. And you, um, wh- who was that for? Was that for the uh, XRCW? Was that um, someone else? Um, was it? it was uh, it was a joint show. It was uh, XICW and Metro Pro Wrestling. It was for the Metro Pro Tag Team Championships. Okay. I'm assuming you didn't win. We won. You did win. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did win. So I'm assuming that's a record yeah. of the youngest ever tag champ. <laughs> I, I, man, I hope so. That that'd be sick. But yeah, we we won the tag titles. We defended them once, and then we lost them uh, like shortly after that to the guys that we won them from in the first place. Okay. Because the first match I could find for me, because that's well before the first match I could find. The first match, because, uh, you know, we always look at the cage match, because that's uh, normally yeah. how you can find stuff. first match I found for myself is uh, for UCW. Um, it was the Flatliners um, versus um, yourself and Jason, uh, James Alexander. Oh, so uh, so basically all, um, that was all the stuff that I had done after I uh, was of age and went uh, went uh, back through the House of Truth. Okay. Um, and so um, what was it like? Because um, you tagged a lot with the DBA, um, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, Malcolm J- Monroe Jr. What was it like tagging with your father? Um. It was like really, like really surreal. Uh, I like I always watched him wrestling growing up, and like uh, I know all of his moves, every move he's ever done. So like, yeah. I like I'm a student of the game through and through. So like being able to tag with him and like kind of blend my style with his, and like uh, also have that like bonding experience with my dad at the same time was it was like really cool. Um, and then I I. I started to outgrow it because, you know, like we get older and like uh, we kind of change and um, it, it's still cool to like every once in a while uh, we'll do like one night only. We'll tag together just for some just for the shits and gigs of it. Mm. And uh, uh, that's always a good time. So hey, he's tagging with my brother now. That's that's their thing. <laughs> oh, that's cool. The family side of it. Um, a question we got asked, which always um, a lot of the questions bring up later, but um, this one pretty much suits for it. Did you ever feel, because um, obviously you're the champion um, at XICW um, and stuff like mm-hmm. that, do you ever feel, did everyone ever feel like you're only kind of, you got so far because of your father or your family or you has that ever been brought up? Um, Kind of been brought up, but like uh, it's, it's not really talked about too much anymore just because uh, there's been more stories about uh, how hard I work than... Uh, than things being given to me. Uh, like I've been doing this for a long time and like uh, anybody that knows about like how I even got my job at XICW is actually like uh, funny. Um, I didn't get a job at XICW as a wrestler until like years after I was like trained. So like um, I did that one tag match with my dad for a joint show, but I was never on an XICW event like from then on until there was uh, two call offs and nobody else to fill a spot in the match. And my dad went, I guess you can be on the show today. So, uh, and then I impressed like people uh, in that match. And then I continuously got a job and uh, it it was like, honestly a grind for me. Um, I honestly made my name elsewhere before I even got to do anything major for XICW. Yeah, I think that's not the perfect way of um, rebutting that question. Like, you weren't there for most of the time, and you kind of made your own name outside of it. You weren't trained by your father, as you said. Like, you were yeah. trained prior to it. So you can't, that argument's not really there. Um, yeah. But, yes, you are currently the XICW um, champ, and you've held mm-hmm. it. I think you've had it twice, but you've, um, according to so this is all cage match side of it, you've held uh, the title for 1,433 days. That sounds about right, yeah, honestly. That's an incredible... Yeah. Um, obviously, that's over two spans. I think um, your longer run was the one previously, but you're, yeah. on, you're on 487 days. How is it yeah. like being like the focal point of the company? Um, it It's, uh, it's kind of interesting because like, I'm put in that position in other companies and it doesn't feel the same as like at uh, XICW. Um 
uh, there's no higher like critique than the ones that I give myself. And like, I'm just constantly striving to be like the best version of myself. So, uh, uh, holding that belt itself means a lot to me because, uh, that title holds a lot of lineage. Like, uh, my grandfather and the Sheik wrestled each other for that title. Uh, uh, they're both former Midwest yeah. champions. M- my dad held that title in the nineties. Uh, so for me to win it and uh, hold on to it for so long um, has been uh, kind of like me just stamping and uh, cementing like the fact that the Monroe dynasty is like very much so alive and well. And that's a pretty good feeling. That's incredible. And I'll, I'll be honest, I never thought I would ever hear the Sheik mentioned in one of these interviews um, in general. Yeah. Like um, I've been learning about the Sheik recently, like I read his book and so forth. Like, and he's, he's insane character Mm -hmm. yeah he's one of the only uh, wrestlers that kind of stayed within character even when outside people just called him sheik didn't they i'll I'll give you a little a little story about how in character he was Mm. uh the sheik started my father's training when he was 16 years old and uh my dad even going to his house and training with him uh, ne- uh, didn't know like him outside of the character. Like when he was training them, he was still in character. Uh, my dad didn't think he spoke English until like well long into their relationship when his wife kind of smartened my dad up. <laughs> like, hey, he's he's fooling you. Like this is this like go talk to him for real. Like, um, and it's just uh that dedication is just such a huge like uh reason for like just like how i move and how i operate i have a very old school like wrestling way of thinking just because like of where my family came from and like the values that we've like had instilled us in us from like very early on uh the sheik is a big part of that because uh without the sheik uh there are no monroes uh the sheik convinced my grandfather that he should be a pro wrestler so um yeah. Um, no, that's that's an incredible story. As I said, like, um, she's like a legend of the wrestling. So yeah, they could um, influence your family is incredible. Um, before we move on, um, so for people that haven't watched these interviews, obviously someone like yourself has been wrestling for so long. We're not going to be going through everything because we'll be here for the rest of your life. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it'll be randomly kind of like segueing further and further into uh, <laughs> your modern day. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll go into um, just one more of XICW before we... Um, so obviously you were the tag champs as well. Um, yeah. You held it with your father. And then mm-hmm. um, with the uh, the Black Wrestlers Matters group. Um, mm-hmm. how, the, um, how did the Black Wrestlers Matter group come about? Um, at uh, that time, there was uh, a lot of like um civil uh unrest over here in the u.s and um uh, a lot of people of color not getting their like um not getting their flowers as one would say and um just being uh, mistreated uh like politically and um so there was a, a young tag team uh of uh two other uh African Americans that were uh, wrestling for the company at the same time, and me and my dad was in a feud with a group called uh, OI Four K or Ohio is for yeah, Killers, yeah. Yeah. and um, uh, we needed uh, assistance in combating that. And then uh, 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 Super Future was their name. They came in and uh, joined forces with the Monroes, and we became Black Wrestlers Matter. And uh, we uh, held the tag team titles in multiple, many different ways in a uh, long going feud with OI4K. Okay. That's cool. Um, so we'll, we'll go with the last thing. Um, what's your kind of, what was your favorite match you've had at XICW? My favorite match I've had at XICW? Mm. Man, that's tough. I've had a lot of a lot of really fun ones. Uh, I get to like wrestle my family and my friends there a lot, so that's cool. Uh, but probably my favorite, uh, we did a uh, war games uh, match uh, after me and my dad had uh, split, and I created my own faction that was like designed to take over XICW for its own. Yeah, um, known as the Kira Clan. 
we uh, challenged Team XICW to a five on five, like Survivor Series style cage match. Um, uh, who was all in that match? Uh, on my team, it was uh, me and uh, my four guys myself, uh, Jack Price, uh, Aaron O'Ryan. Um, we had a bunch of members, Dre Jacobs, and um, I feel like that was before Adam joined. So it was Alex Weir who would have been the, the fifth one. And then on my dad's side, it was him, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, Congo Kong, uh, Jamie Cox. And there was one other person I can't I can't remember who it was. There was so much chaos in that match. You but... either, because cage match has them as question, question, question. So I can't even have uh, you over yes. that. <laughs> I love it. Um Yeah, so uh that was a crazy match. We had a lot of fun and uh that was honestly one of the um one of the first match I used uh thumbtacks in. Mm. Um I decided to be dumb and i hit my dad with a spanish fly off the top rope into some thumbtacks and then i followed it up by going to the top rope and doing a 450 into the thumbtacks yeah it wasn't my 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 brightest moment but yeah moving from yeah. what first time used thumbtacks let's go with spanish fly and a 450 and so it's probably yeah. like a, yeah yeah, normally so. it's a bat body drop is the first you got. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, yeah, no, let's go face first, and then <laughs> let's double it up, do a full rotation and a half, land on my face in the dumb tax again. Style. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's been great. Um, so moving on, um, some a company I'd like to so I'd like to speak about whenever they come up is um IWA Mid South. Um, yes. First match I could see here it may not have been your first match. There was for, with Thunder Kitty of all people. <laughs> TK. Uh, my, my first match would have been when I was a little bit younger. I wrestled uh, under a mask. I don't even remember the name that we used, but uh, as like a little fill-in, throw-in match because uh, my dad and Ian Ryan uh, used to work together for a long time. And um, that match with Thunder Kitty was, uh, was really fun. I remember it. We wrestled. Uh, it was an outdoor show. Um... Thunder Kitty was uh, just so like full of life and her character is so cool. She's just like, at that time, she was like a 90 year old lady, uh, <laughs> lady wrestler extraordinaire. And she came out smoking a cigarette <laughs> and um, we just had a really good time. Um, I had some really cool matches and some cool moments for IWA Mid South. I wrestled from them from the time I was 16 all the way up until I think I was like 21 or 22. So it was uh, uh, always a good time to venture down there and hang out with those guys. Yeah, and how was it um, wrestling the Dream Run? <laughs> For me, it was way different than other people. So like, <laughs> like there's like horror stories and it, and they're like I've seen some like crazy shit in IWA mid south locker rooms and just in IWA mid south in general but um i met some of my favorite people uh in not only in wrestling in life there and like uh like lifelong friends um at IWA mid south and i'll forever like be grateful for that uh wrestling under him for me was like cool uh he the worst thing is like he hated that i was i was black and didn't come out to rap music that was like the worst <laughs> shit like for for like me and his back and forth banter but like other than that like me and ian like had a had a solid relationship um so uh yeah a lot different than other people's experience there but like i had a good time i got to like wrestle my friends uh yeah so <laughs> Yeah, not everyone's experience is going to be a bad experience, no matter where you are. Like, um, I'm glad yeah. you're there. <laughs> um, and another company, I just it's incredible. You've wrestled for a lot of places, but um, so I'm just uh, throwing out the ones where I think Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Um, you wrestled for as well, which is insane. <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so the reason that came about, uh, my grandfather actually. Um, uh, took part in the training of uh, Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope. So uh, they've been a part of my family for a long time. And uh, uh, me wrestling for them was a no brainer. I started wrestling for them like uh, like really, really early. Um, 
I wrestled at a gathering when I was like 13 years old uh, at four o'clock in the morning before. So a lot of weird stuff happened in that Juggalo Championship Wrestling, but uh, that's a cool place. Yeah, and did you ever get to wrestle them in particular at any point? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, the closest I got was I was in a six-man tag uh, with Violent J, but he was on our side. Yeah, no, I've heard some weird, weird stories about them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fair you, you hear stories about everyone. Um, and um, you also, moving on, you won the UPW alternative title um, during this period around this time, 2015. And you did get to wrestle to Massa Jampia. So, uh, yeah, my time as alternative champion was really cool. And then uh, after I won the alternative uh, championship, Tommaso Ciampa had won the uh, uh, the heavyweight championship in like a battle royal where like me and him were the last two people. He beat me, so then I wrestled him in a champion versus champion match mm. for the alternative and heavyweight titles, and I became the unified champion. It was really cool. Tommaso's like he's a he's a really good dude. Uh, um, always will remember uh uh hanging out with him we got to that was our first time wrestling each other but it wasn't our last time uh and we got to hang out uh, a bunch because we were on a bunch of the same shows right before uh he went to the wwe that's incredible like um because you have fought like a who's who um of people obviously people that have gone to waaw um but you fought a lot of the the, the for people in the UK may not have heard of these people as much as um, like someone that watches like Deathmatch Wrestling and so forth like that. But you've got you mm-hmm. fought a lot of who's who in 2016. So you put people like Alex Shelley, which is incredible. Um, yeah. Mance Warner. Um, and I used to talk with Mance Warner as well. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I didn't really miss out, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, and one of my favorite wrestlers, uh, John Wayne Murdoch. Yeah, Murdoch's a man. I love. Yeah, Murdoch's another lifelong friend I met at IWA Mid South. <laughs> yeah. Um. How is it like wrestling Murdoch? Um. Because he he just looks like he at one. He looks from every other people I've spoken to. He, he his stuff looks like it'll kill you, but he's actually safe as houses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's 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 a true professional. He's he's the best in my opinion. Mur- Murdoch's the best dude. He um yeah he's. He always performs, always goes out there and puts on like killer matches with no matter who he's out there with. And um, uh, it's always a pleasure getting to work with John because uh, I know that we'll make magic. We always just have a shit ton of fun when we're in there together. Okay. Um, and then around this point as well, um, I sent you people like Alex Shelley. You had a, um, a match with Abyss and Crazy Steve as well. Uh, uh, I had a couple of matches yeah. with Abyss and Crazy Steve. I wrestled Crazy Steve. I wrestled Abyss and Crazy Steve at Cobo Hall um, here in Detroit, Michigan in a cage match. That was cool. Yeah, um, Abyss, um, I've met a few times because he came over to you because I used to um, help with a company called Kamikaze and he used to, he came mm-hmm. over and he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Yeah, so nice. Yeah, he just genuinely like, um, um, there's like a, He'd make you feel welcome. Um, like, it didn't matter who you were, he'd just make you feel welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, always. Yeah. Um, and you've mentioned, obviously, we've gone through the war games, which was going to be one of my questions up next, so we've already done that, so that's good. Um, and then, obviously, for people that have been watching AEW a lot at the moment, um, Eddie Kingston, you got a chance to wrestle as well. That, that was That's up there for one of my favorite matches I've had in XICW. That match was uh, kind of uh the coming out party for like the process when i first like started come coming up with and creating this character that uh, i would start to become forever essentially um uh my match with eddie kingston was a big part of that and it showed me a lot and uh showed me um how ready i was and how next level i was uh, wrestling eddie because he was somebody I looked up to, and me and him got to have a really cool conversation about Japanese wrestling and its uh, influence on the both of us. Mm. And uh, our match reflected that very much so. It was a very All Japan-esque match. And uh, uh, some things happened, and the way we called the match, on the fly, I just like decided that like I wanted it to be uh, like 
different because of how the crowd was moving and uh almost without saying any words me and him kind of just like gelled together and we like orchestrated uh from what the match was to what we have now like um made it and it was just a really fun match we had a good time he's a really good dude no it's great when people you can have matches where you've you've planned something obviously things change and you can just move on to something else straight away um so you you're a bigger japanese influence did you I, yes, yes, actually. Um, being a student of the game, like I like, I started wrestling early, so I imagine how early I started watching yeah. wrestling. Um, and like uh, growing up, and like uh, all the Attitude Era stuff was like really cool uh, for the people uh, like in my class and like growing up. But while they were watching that, I was watching like FMW and like All Japan and like New Japan and like just uh studying all different types of wrestling from all different walks of life and uh like made me fall in love with wrestling like all the more because it was just so much different than what was being offered over here yeah the strongest so who was your favorite japanese wrestler at that point uh my favorite wrestler of all time is hayabusa that's that's insane yeah uh um, yeah like if you're gonna pick someone he is up there um uh, people like him kenta gabashi uh oh yeah Ken, is my, kenta gabashi is my favorite wrestler uh, M- M- uh mitsuharu masao is up there for me yeah and kawada's up there for me too <laughs> yeah like just the four pillars in general uh oh, but yeah like, kabashi's one of these people that like just any match it didn't matter if he was just fighting every match felt like a m- massive match yeah because he was a massive character um, yeah, every every match had a big match feel for sure. Yeah, it makes me sad that like obviously because I uh, it makes me sad that I'll, I he retired before I kind of got into him, so I'm never actually going to see him wrestle. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of them ones. Um, and then prior to um, where we kind of um, we go into the pandemic and we discuss stuff outside of wrestling, there's one other thing I wanted to bring mm. up was the um, the PWA tournament that you're a part of um, that you won in 2019. The what? Uh, what P- was it? PWA um, Junior Everweight Title Tournament you're a part of. Oh, yeah, that did happen. Yeah, um, how was it going through a tournament like that? Because um, you fought people like um, Justin Pilgrim and uh, Joseph Swartz, Swartzy, um, who's mm-hmm. going to be on the channel at some point in the future. Um, how oh, was yeah. it fighting that? It was, uh, it was so cool because it was like a... I was scheduled to appear in a tag match <laughs> and I got there and they're like, Hey, your partner's not coming. So, uh, we got this title and there's this tournament and, uh, how do you feel about like, uh, going the distance? And, uh, I had a bunch of cool matchups in there. So I was like, yeah, I'm down. Um, at that time I was, uh, I was like grinding. So my cardio was crazy. So, I was wrestling in like 80 degree heat outside and I wrestled, I think it was like three or four matches. And I was just like, I felt really good after each match. I felt progressively better. So that was, it was a really cool tournament to, to wrestle in. Yeah. It's weird how that can come about though. You like, you were scheduled for a tag team match. The tag team match doesn't happen. <laughs> now you win a whole tournament. It's all, <laughs> yeah, that, that was yeah. that thing. Man, it's card <sighs> subject to change always. <laughs> and it would change for the better for you. Clearly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And another title I wanted to bring up, um, you were Horror Slam Heavyweight Champion as well. Um, yeah. That's an incredible title to have, um, and you defended it a lot. I did. <laughs> um, obviously, um, this was just after the pandemic, so I'm kind of skipping forward. Um, mm-hmm. But you held it from like November 2011, um, November 2000, November 2021, that's the one, um, oh. until um, just last year. Yeah. Um, how was it like, like carrying a talk for that long? Um, Matt told you. Um, yeah. It was, uh, it was really cool because Horror Slam is a company that, like, when it started, re- like, when it started running, uh, I was a part of the shows. I'm uh, one of the day ones of Horror Slam, and uh, it was, uh, it was really cool for uh them to like uh put faith in me and put stock in me like obviously like we have the deathmatch uh heavyweight title there as well but the heavyweight title was just as important and um for them to like uh make me uh like their guy and i I was wrestling in a bunch of cool matches and like you said i defended it a lot um 
uh, it, it was just uh, really cool uh, to have the opportunity to work with them uh, on that level for so long. Yeah, and like you defended it against a lot, like as you said, a lot, but it was against put like tough opponents, like people like Jordan Oliver, um, Alex mm-hmm. Shelley again. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to bring it. He's not someone people really want to speak about often, but I've just noticed you defended it against Michael Elgin as well. Um, how was he I to did. wrestle? Um. So I got to work with him a lot. Yeah. Um. Just because. Uh, he was like a House of Truth guy, like in Ring of Honor. He was managed by my my trainer, Truth Martini. Uh, he used to wrestle for my dad uh, back in the day, so like we've known each other for a long time. And uh, like, I didn't even know that like he was gonna be like on the show, and they like sent me the graphic, and I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Like we're doing it, we're gonna run it, and. Um, I wrestled him for XICW a couple weeks before that too. So, um, wrestling him is like, uh, uh, it's a spectacle for sure. Um, he's, he's tremendously strong and, uh, like that's like showcase, but like he's uh, super athletic as well. And, um, we had like uh, a lot of cool, like exchanges in our, in our matches. So like, it was, it was cool. I bet it's quite intense as well. He just seems like they're kind of just intent to wrestler. Oh yeah, and he hits hard, and that's I'm into that. So <laughs> anybody, anybody that'll fucking try to ring my bell, like I'm down for. It. And like he's got some meaty forearms, so I was like, let's run it. Yeah, and then unfortunately you did lose that title um, to that man once again, John Wayne Murdoch. <laughs> Murdoch, that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Murdoch. Um, so what we normally discuss at this point, um, is the pandemic era. So it's kind of like a break from the wrestling side. Um, so we kind of get behind you yourself. Um, so Mm -hmm. what kind of, um, are you into music? What kind of music are you into? I'm into a lot of stuff. I'm into, damn dude, there's not much music that I'm not into. Music is like one of my like serene things. Um, super into like the Beatles, super into Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I'm a huge Mac Miller guy. Um, I like Drake because he's fucking dope. Uh, um, oh man, uh, the pandemic had me listening to a lot of sad boy music, so I was listening to Lil like Lil Peep, uh, Juice World. Uh, um, oh man, uh, man, tons, tons of tons of great artists that I can I can't think of. Um, I also like music from cartoons. I discovered that from a uh, quarantine, yeah. uh, COVID area. Uh, I taught myself how to play the ukulele so I could play songs from Adventure Time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. My partner's really into Adventure Time. Um, it's right in the corners, just like a whole bunch of it. I know. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, the top, yeah. <laughs> I see little Jake. I see little Jake yeah, in the background. Like, um, you know, <laughs> hello, Bimo. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Because this is her office, but yeah, she's massively into it. All oh, the cameras gone. Yeah, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> there we go. Um, and like we normally put people on the spot at this point. What what would you say is your top three artists? My top three artists. Yeah. Oh man, that's so tough. Uh, but like. If I had to listen to only three artists for the rest of my life, it would be uh, Mac Miller, mm. um, Jimi Hendrix, that third spot's tough, oh, I'm going to lock in with yeah, man, I'm going to lock in with the Beatles. Those are top three. It's not a bad top three, are we honest? If you know yeah. Jimi Hendrix, the Beatles, yeah. and the Matt Miller, uh, not bad at all. Yeah. Um, and um, do you watch many movies at all? Or I'm a huge movie guy. Yeah, that's my thing. Uh, over quarantine, I, um, I like to tell people, I was like, yeah, man, I hope they come out with the Netflix too, because I finished the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like, use um, uh, an app called Letterboxd, if you've heard of that. I think I have heard of Letterboxd, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's basically where, it's like IMDb, where you can kind of like um, 
like log the films you watched and see what you can. But I've been started working. There's like um, they have lists on there of like the top two hundred fifty documentaries or top two hundred fifty like women directed films and stuff like that. And I've just mm-hmm. made it a mission to complete them. Oh, that's you, dope. you just watch stuff that you'd never like um things from like nineteen twenty. You just be watching like, what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I love it. What kind of genre like what's your favorite kind of genre film? Uh I'm into like action, uh I'm into horror, um I'm into like uh like sat like satirical comedies and like uh some like out of the box stuff like that. Uh, I'm super into um, Quentin Tarantino stuff. Yeah, I'm just super intrigued and interested in like how he like directs film and like uh, Kill Bill and Kill Bill Volume Two are like two of like like my favorite action movies of all time with some of the dopest like sword fighting scenes like in a movie. And I was like, I'm super into like old kung fu movies too, yeah. like uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like. Uh, I, I was like a, a big Jackie Chan Jet Li guy when I was younger. So um, I'm into like movies like that. Um, horror movies, like old horror movies too. Like uh, um, sometimes I'll, I'll pick out some like black and white stuff. <laughs> and like Dracula just. And stuff like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, stuff like Not Living Dead and so forth. Um, talking to Kill Bill, I've got a really into Kill Bill. I've got a Kill Bill tattoo on my arm. Um, oh, sick! Um, yeah, of the bride there. Um, it's kind of oh, dude, that's kind awesome. of <laughs> Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, my I have a a ball python, and she's named after uh the bride. Her name is Beatrix Kiddo. That's that's my uh, <laughs> so, yeah, my snake's big, name. Um, and then old Congo film, uh, kind of like karate films, my mate, um, we do a movie night, um, cause we kind of live separately now. So we do it over Skype and stuff like that. It's kind of catch mm-hmm. up. And we watched one, which really random, which you might be interested. It's called Yes, Madame. Um, yes, Madame. It's a, pre- it's like a 1985, like it's proper old school, like comedy, karate kind of thing. It, we watched it because, uh... um, we had like a theme for the night of, um, a film star in the person you picked last time. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it randomly had Michelle Yu in. Like, oh, like really young Michelle Yu, and she was just like a karate expert. Like, it was insane. <laughs> um, it's it. on Prime at the moment. Um, you can check it out. It's on Prime, and it's yeah. called Yes, Madame. It's either called, yeah, it's called Yes, Madame, but I think it's got some weird name on Prime. It's like something like Strike Force 2 or something like that, because, you know, they <laughs> change the name, and it makes no sense to anything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, um, it's, it's, it's mental, <laughs> is the best way to describe it. I, yeah, I got to check that out for sure. Especially because it's badly dubbed, really badly dubbed. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like the worst. I love, I love it. I love it. That's that's the best. Yeah, and like it, it seems I don't know if this thing, but like when you watch badly dubbed films, everyone's got like a Texas accent. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Everyone's from Texas, and they say stuff like "I need to go to the shitter." And it's like, <laughs> what, 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 what? never heard that expression except for bad dubs. Yeah. Um, and then like, what kind of like hobbies do you have outside of wrestling? Um, I like to play video games, uh, over, uh, quarantine, uh, me and a lot of guys from the faction, one of the factions I'm in war Inc. We started like a gaming channel yeah. and, uh, we streamed and played a bunch of video games. I've always been a huge video game guy since I was a kid. Everybody that's ever traveled with me knows that I travel with some sort of system. And when we're on the road, I'm playing. So, um, into video games, I like basketball. Um, I'm into smoking weed. That's <laughs> that's a hobby of mine. It's legal. Uh, so it's, fun. <laughs> it's it's legal. Um, yeah, and then like obviously like wrestling is just everything that I eat, sleep, and breathe. So I try to do other things in between. That's not that. <laughs> yeah, it's on a lot of the burnout side of it. Um, what? What kind of type of games are you into, or is it just a general kind of? Um, so uh, I'm I'm into just about everything. I'll give just about everything a chance if someone tells me it's a good game. Uh, one of my first jobs, uh, I worked for a magazine, and uh, basically I played uh, video games 
uh, that developer sent me either right before launch or at launch, and I would write a review about it, and it would go in the magazine. And uh, I did that for a few years, and I played games that like I never thought that I would like, and like I really enjoyed them, and I like had to type these in depth reviews about them. So I've kind of uh, since having that job, I've uh, carried that mentality over of like giving everything a chance, like. I play like weird ass like simulators sometimes like where you're like uh, a power wash guy or oh, yeah, like, like farming simulators. Uh, yeah, yeah. I play uh, I play like car mechanic simulator like crazy. Uh, I play um, a lot of like RPGs because I'm into like Dungeons and Dragons. So like Baldur's Gate is like a big game that's yeah, literally Dungeon that, yeah. Dragon. Dude, it's so cool. It's literally like Dungeons and Dragons on console or, or PC if you play on PC. But um, it's it's a really, really fun game, and the character creation is nuts. Yeah, like I've wanted to get into Dungeons and Dragons because uh, I've been. There's a UK channel called Chaotic Neutral. Uh, which mm-hmm. play, uh, they have like a sister channel called No Rolls Barred, where every week they play board games and stuff like that. You just watch it. Um, and I've got really interested in it. Um, so I'm going to try and get into it. Yeah, it's it's really dope. Uh, I play Dungeons and Dragons uh, every other Thursday with the crew that I've played with for like, what is it, like four years now? We played the same campaign with the same characters. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's an ongoing game. Uh, that it's like the highlight of my week when it comes up. Uh, it's just the bond. It's not even the game, is it? It's just the bonding with your mates and stuff like that as well. Yeah, it? for sure. Yeah. Um, and we've had a few questions in, which is kind of the, uh, the kind of way to segue. One we get asked all the time for every guest um, mm-hmm. is, a movie of your life, who would play you? In a movie of my life, who would play me? Yeah. Um, Jaden Smith. Fair enough. You knew it. Like you've <laughs> answered that before. <laughs> oh, I, ha- I have answered that before. I'm like, yeah, dude. And like, as I've gotten older and changed a little bit, I'm like, Oh, would it be someone different? But like, even Jaden Smith now, yes, for sure, it would still be Jaden Smith. He's grown with you. It's it's like he was born for the role. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another one we get, um, we haven't been asked before because it's not something we don't really get for generational people on the channel. Um, <laughs> if you had to tier list yourself, your dad, and your uh, your grandfather in wrestling ability. Oh, dude. <laughs> we I tell people this all the time. I'm the greatest Monroe to ever lace a pair of boots, dude. Like, I'm like, like when I'm when I'm being like when I'm being humble, I'm like, oh yeah, my grandpa. You know, he's the OG. He's the he was the best wrestler. Uh, me, I'm coming in at number two because I'm better than my dad for sure. And then my bo- my brother's at the bottom of the barrel. But uh, when I'm telling the truth. Like I'm the most versatile of like of the four of us. I I can do it all. Like I'm that guy. So I'm top tier. <laughs> well, modern era does, don't it? Yeah, you have to like, modern era wrestling. You have to be versatile. Uh, look, people struggle just with their one way. There we go. Yeah, I didn't expect sure. that. <laughs> um, and then um, a question that was asked, which I need to. Uh, this is really coincidental if you're not aware of them. Um, someone called Loretta Monroe. Um, who was asked the question, uh, what's your ideal day off? What do you do when what's you're my old, ideal what's your day ideal, day, ideal day off? Or what does it look like? Yeah, it's not a coincidence. That's my wife that asked that yeah, question. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. very... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> um, yeah, my ideal day off is just hanging out, uh, playing some video games, smoking some weed. Uh, my ideal day off, yeah, I don't get days off for real, honestly. Uh, so this is legit, like my pretend day off. Um, uh, Remington Roar and his partner Indrid, uh, they co- they come over and they stay the night sometimes. And those are my favorite like off days because we either like wrestle at a show and then come and play like Magic the Gathering video games and just smoke weed and fucking hang out. Like that's my ideal like day off. Just chilling with my friends and like uh getting to play video games and like just do the things i love and just hang out with the people i care about yeah magic the gallery my partner was really into that I was more of like a Yu-Gi-Oh guy dude uh, i'm a Yu Gi Oh guy yeah. i just got into magic the gathering because of remington uh um my wife and uh like 
as some of my other friends, but like I was never into Magic the Gathering. I was like, nah, dude, I'm good. And like now I'm I can't get enough. I'm gonna uh, I'm out here wrestling for commander decks now. So yeah, it's addictive, isn't it? Like, <laughs> like, she's like, there's a massive deck beyond me. It's just like flipping <laughs> addictive kind of thing. It's where they get you though. It's the same with Yu-Gi-Oh. Just yeah, invented new stuff like the when they started doing like you had to flip coins and stuff that kind of blew my mind. Uh, I just like the old school trap cards. Move on. That's yeah, same, thing. same. <laughs> um and uh someone that was just asking when this um video is out which i'm hoping it's going to be out about tuesday wednesday um i'm going to struggle to pronounce their name it's like awl man it's tash i think or man it's sash i think they're going awl man it's sash so there you go it'll be out wednesday um so we'll move back into the actual wrestling now um from if i had notes i've lost them they've gone it, we're not going back into the wrestling uh <laughs> Here we go, we're back. Um, so, going straight out to rest, when did you, because it wasn't, like, you didn't shut down, like, the UK as much as um, you still go, you still kind of wrestled a lot, um, whereas, like, the UK, like, wrestling just didn't happen for eight months or something like that. So, it didn't happen for us for, a, it, it, it was a, a while where I wasn't wrestling at all, mm. um, and it kind of just kind of crept back around, and, like, people were throwing, like, shows that weren't, like, sanctioned <laughs> so, yeah 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 so um uh, i did a couple of those at un i did they were called undisclosed location shows um and then i did uh a lot of uh like filming like uh wrestling for no audience so that was interesting mm. uh, uh like it was wrestling for stuff that was going to later go on IWTV and stuff like that. So um, it was an interesting experience, but I was always trying to like find a way to hone my craft and like uh, just be able to come out of this whenever we came out of that uh, bigger and better, you know? Yeah. And um, you mentioned obviously wrestling in front of no fans. Does it feel more like a training session when you kind of like, did it bring you back to where you were just obviously before you were wrestling in front of crowds as training? Uh, it did feel a lot like training, but like, it felt more like a dress rehearsal than like training <laughs> because yeah. like, like even like when I was training, like obviously we practice how we play. So like we're the full character mm. at, uh, once we're doing like those practice matches and like, but we're in gym clothes, dude. Like we're like, this is like regular stuff, but, uh, wrestling in like these like warehouses and these places with like nobody, but a guy like this with a camera, like. It was just so weird. It, I, it felt like I was at like a dress rehearsal because like I've done a little bit of like acting and shadow casting, so it just felt like I was at a dress rehearsal. Yeah, and it's it's a weird experience just be able to hear the mat continuously, no echo, no one speaking, and it's just yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, when I used to train, it was just all weird kind of thing. Um, and then you um you ended up winning the MAW Heavyweight Title. Um, mm -hmm. around it's still around now, but um, it isn't as mm -hmm. bad as it was. Um, and you beat Larry D, um, I did. who I don't get enough to talk about enough. Um, how was it fighting Larry D? Uh, Larry D, another <laughs> lifelong friend I met at IWA Mid South. Friends with everyone. Man, dude, I've been wrestling for a long time. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, uh, Larry D's a good dude, man. Uh, we were in a, a group together, me, him, Mance Warner. And a bunch of other people, uh, uh, Satu Jin was in the group with us as well. Uh, we're called the Players Club. We are managed by a dude named Billy the P. And uh, Larry D was like uh, our enforcer. Like he was obviously like, look at the dude. <laughs> so um, it was cool uh, all those years later to like uh, get to wrestle him and uh, in a singles match for a title. Yeah, and then you um, you got four and you lost it to uh, Laredo Kid. Um, yeah. Once again, I was yeah, I like fighting someone like Laredo because he's very uh, like luchador esque. Uh, Laredo's dude, he's so good. Uh, uh, when I first started like training lucha, Laredo was one of the dudes who like helped me out a lot, and like uh, uh, just always been such a a, a good dude. And uh, anytime like I wrestled down in Texas, um, I would hang out with Laredo and stuff. And he would do a lot of shows up this way uh, for MAW. Uh, he actually took the title off of me, uh, not on an MAW show. 
It was uh, for Martinez Entertainment uh, in um, Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, promo promo clones. I don't know if that's um, how it was pronounced on air. Um, yeah, because it's weird because Cage Match have it in a weird order, which makes no sense. So on that show, the twenty fourth of September, he was the champion. But then on the twenty fifth of September is when he beat you to become the champion. Makes no sense on Cage Match. That does it. Like... So yeah, that yeah, that makes no sense. He <laughs> um. Yeah, he had the uh, the AAA cruiserweight title, and we wrestled for both titles, and he won the MAW title. Okay, um, and then what I want to bring up now is um, how all you started to get to know you. Um, when did you get into the kind of the deathmatch side of wrestling? When did that you decide? You know what? I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> so uh, my dad uh, was kind of always known for like being like one of those uh, like OG hardcore dudes. Uh, him and New Jack used to be a tag team. Um, yeah, he, he's 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 brutal, dude. Like he's still, and he just actually retired from doing death matches recently um, after a death match tournament that we did together. Um, but he, uh, uh, it, I remember my dad, um, Necro Butcher. Um, and uh, it was Ian Rotten and uh, Madman Pondo were in like a four way match or whatever uh, at my uh, at my dad's promotion. And like I was a little kid, and like they got so bloody and like so gross. And my dad took a crazy bump at the end, and like I was like, "Yo, my dad's dead for sure." <laughs> like I'm like little orphan Malcolm now, like. And uh, I was like hysterically bawling my eyes out. Uh, like one of my aunts or something grabbed me and took me over to my dad because he knew that I was like freaking out. So he like had them go get me and bring him over to it, bring me over to him. And like he's like, "Oh, dude, like I'm all good." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> like mine's blown?" <laughs> and then and I was like, "Yeah, this is crazy." But like, um, I always had like an appreciation for it. But I was always kind of like. Man, I'm pretty as fuck. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> like, I'm, like, there's no way, man. Uh, and then um, I uh, uh, was working with uh, uh, Global Force, um, or uh, yeah, it, like Impact when it yeah, was Global yeah, yeah, Forge. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did a, a segment called Global Forged with them, which was like gut check, but something different because it was called something different yeah. at that time. Um, and after I got released from there, I felt like really weird about wrestling. And like, I didn't know if I wanted to keep wrestling. And uh, uh, I kind of decided to like think it over and like spin it on its head. And I just had to do something different and be different. And like, I was like moping around uh, about like being fired <laughs> and like um, I used to tell, tell people like, and people like, they were like, yo, like, like Malcolm's like, he's pretty versatile, bro. Like he can, like, he can do it all, man. Like anything you ask of him, he'll be able to do it. And like, I always like, was like confident about that and like thought that was really cool. And like, I like legit sat down and I was like, dude, I'm sitting here like bitching and complaining about not having a job when like, in reality, they just don't realize that they lost the best wrestler in the world. Like, I don't care what they, like, I can literally, I'm the most well-rounded wrestler in the world. Like, I can do it all. And uh, so then I started um, doing more lucha, and that's when I started wrestling in Texas a lot more with, like, guys like uh, Laredo, Black Tarus, Silver Tiger, um, guys like that, and just, like, working hard and uh, getting, like, recognized by them as, like, uh, like, being comp, you know, yeah. and uh, then like kind of training uh, a little more catch as catch can style and like wrestling that style and kind of like trying to become proficient in that uh, going into like the strong style and like uh, really like sinking my roots into that and my like uh, technical ability, my hard hitting ability. I was already a prime high flyer because I was like 130 fucking pounds at the time. <laughs> and like, so I, I was putting together all these pieces of my game, all these pieces of the process, yeah. and there was something missing. And uh, I, 
it was always in front of me. It was like deathmatch wrestling. And I was just like, how, how do I pay respect to that art, to that aspect, to those guys that do that and, um, uh, prove that I can hang with some of the best and prove that I'm the most well-rounded wrestler in the world. Um, and I did that and I just jumped in and I started wrestling guys like Neil Diamond Cutter and John Wayne Murdoch. And like, I, I, I don't half ass anything. And like anybody that knows me knows that about me. And, and, and that's kind of just how that came about. And like, I, I just fell in love with deathmatch wrestling because like, I've already, I've already, uh, sweated and I've cried for this business. Like, uh, I bled in like different ways, but like giving this amount of blood and giving this like amount, like giving this, uh, piece of myself uh, back to the business that's given so much to me means so much to me in like so many different ways and being able to still show people that like even in a death match I can pull out a leg trap German with a, a, a nice bridge and like uh, um, bring my innovative and like creative offense uh, to like death match wrestling as well and just like uh, show people that like I can literally do it all um do you remember your first like actual death? What you would class as a death match? Um, I used to do fans bring the weapons matches with my dad uh, all the time. Uh, that w were like progressively like uh, like got more and more intense and like added more stuff. But uh, I I I fully dove in uh, in like 20, 2018, 2019. Um, uh, my, uh, I did, I did one with Mance, mm. uh, that was like pretty early on in that time. Uh, and then I did, uh, one with Jeff King. That was like my stamp that I was going to stay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned a fan's wearing a weapon match. It's not a question I normally ask you. What's the weirdest weapon a fan you've brought? A, a lot of weird stuff. Uh, <laughs> but I've gotten a dildo crucifix that had th <laughs> thumbtacks on all of the heads and then barbed wire uh binding it together uh and then it had like uh light bulbs on it as keep well going. keep going that <laughs> yeah yeah that was the fucking weirdest thing that i've ever it's yeah well, it just it, someone thought of that. That's what I mean. yeah, <laughs> yeah, they they like dreamed it up and they fucking engineered it in like in living color. It appeared in in the match, like and I was like, lights. "What?" <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck are we doing here, guys?" <laughs> this might be the end. Um, um, and a couple of questions we asked the death match guys. Um, what's mm -hmm. the what's something you've taken where people expect it to be like ridiculously horrific, but it actually wasn't that bad. Um, even outside of death match, I just do crazy shit and take crazy bumps all the time that people think I shouldn't live from. Uh, like I let my partner, Tommy Vendetta, uh, give me a Canadian destroyer from the top rope to the floor, uh, before, <laughs> um, people question that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did like a, a moonsault off of, uh, a 15 foot balcony. Um, yep. Uh, I was like, I used to, when I was younger, I was like really big into like the big dives and stuff. Um, but yeah, like stuff like that. I just take crazy stuff on my head and now I just take crazy stuff on my head through glass. <laughs> Not shit off of it. Um, what's <laughs> something that you haven't taken yet, which you'd like, it sounds weird that I'd like to take, but you know something that you like, is there anything you want to try? Um... One that comes up a lot is strimmer or a weed whacker. Um, is the probably the US term. Oh, yeah, no, I don't want to take one of those. Someone like weed whacked me in the ass before because like I got a I got a, I got a nice little little cushion back there, so people like to fuck me it's up weed literally. Yeah. <laughs> and like uh, I got weed whacker on the, on the cheeks before, and that shit was not it. I don't like that. Um, I thought I wanted to take cactus until I actually did. That shit sucked. Um, so you don't dream. That's probably the best thing. I don't want to take anything. <laughs> prob uh, honestly, explosions. Like, uh, Onita 
is like the king of explosions and like <laughs> i i uh matt tremont is like a student of the game and i got to spend a lot of time with matt tremont and wrestling him mm. and uh he's super big on the explosions uh and uh i'm like dude that shit's so cool i want to take i want to take like an exploding barbed wire or some shit i think everyone that i've heard take it from like manco and terry funk and said it, it sucks that's from what I've heard. <laughs> yeah yeah i i yeah that's what i hear too uh i got to meet um uh cactus jack or mick foley uh yeah. at one of the last uh, icw shows when he uh ddt ah, john yeah, wayne murdoch yeah. <laughs> so uh i we we talked about explosions and he said that this shit sucked so <laughs> well, we i was like man two figuring yeah um mm-hmm. to be fair we, there's a thing on uh, my channel as well the last few times that people have said that like they dreamed us of in so um there's a guy called antonio gonzalez uk guys he said he wanted to get hit by a strimmer um, his mm-hmm. next match up, he fought Big Fucking Joe, uh, oh. the UK guy. Um, yeah. He strummed him eight times, just kept going at like, um, kept going at him. And like, like, two times he was kind of fine; he was in pain. But at the end, he was just going like this: stop, just like, <laughs> it's just like stop. Uh, so we we're blamed for that slightly. Um, yeah. And then the other one, which is a nicer one, um, Gary J came on, um, mm-hmm. and he said he wanted to fight Masaska Tanaka, um, and he did. So you know. So you might get an exploding ball, boy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I've been around Tremont a lot, so I might mess around and get that exploding ball boy from him. <laughs> Don't blame us if it goes badly, though. We, we weren't. Yeah, bothered. right. Um, and um, the last thing I'm going to bring up before we kind of get, um, we kind of end it, um, you brought him up, the um, the Michigan Pillars. How did that come about? Uh, Man, it's just after quarantine and like all the things leading up, uh to like where we are now it was just four guys that was putting michigan on the map and like kind of getting that stigma of michigan being like a black hole out of the air and it was me tommy vendetta jack price and jason hotch so uh that's how the michigan pillars came about and then me and tommy uh kind of took the show on the road as a tag team and that's just what we're doing now Okay. And I, to be fair, it's weird. Um, I watched the an event this morning, which I didn't watch it because you were coming on. I just randomly put on ICW uh, Volume Fifty Seven, um, uh-huh. like yourselves versus Four IO. Um, and as a tag team, you're incredible. Like, thank the, you. The mixture of deathmatch slash doing random shit. Like, yeah, flipping, we're into like, it. You'd flip off him, and he'd flip you into it. It was it was incredible. Thank you. Um, and you're um, H2O champions at the moment, aren't you, as well? We are the H2O tag team champions right now, yeah. Which you can check on IWTV as well. Uh, <laughs> also, yeah. <laughs> but um, So to wind up the interview, what we normally do is a couple of questions we had to get at the end, but we've started something called a six-pack challenge, um, which is basically I'll mention just some random people. We can either tell us a story or just what your opinion of them. You may have just right. seen them oh, once. Okay. Hold on, can you give me yeah. one second, please? We're back. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's something called a six pack challenge. You basically six random people will bring up. You may you may have just saw them once, and there's no story or there's no kind of even an opinion on them. Um, okay. Someone I randomly just saw because I was just um, perusing through what I was discussing. Uh, Nick Gage. <laughs> just just saw him. You're in a six man tag, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I almost broke my neck in that six man tag. Actually, That's a good uh, there's song. a video. <laughs> there's a video. There's a video on YouTube of me almost breaking my neck. So, um, yeah, Nick is a, yeah, he's a, he's, uh, he's really good at what he does, man. <laughs> like he's, uh, he's, he's solid and, uh, he, he's like, he's about his shit and he, uh, he, he knows his shit. Um, he's also a really good fucking commentator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I listened to him on yeah. commentary before yeah. and I'm like, fuck man, Nicky could do it all, bro. And, um. Uh, but yeah, uh, getting to work with him was cool. Him and my dad was supposed to have a match that uh, never kind of happened. And uh, it was cool that me and him got to wrestle each other in Detroit. And then that was me and Effie's like second uh, second or third meeting. Uh, so we got to have uh, a six man uh, with all type of fuckery. I almost broke my neck. I still finished the match. It was a fucking great time. <laughs> yeah, and the two, fair, the two you've just brought up as well, uh, Bussy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've been in them or matches you've had with them? Uh, yeah, I've had quite a few matches with them. Uh, I wrestled them uh, when I tagged with Uncle Chase for GCW. Mm. Um, 
I wrestled them in that six man. Uh, and then I faced S Effie in like, um, a bunch of, uh, like singles matches. Uh, they're all, they're both really fucking talented and, uh, they have such high energy all the time. And like, they always have the craziest fucking ideas and like, uh, they just fucking execute and, uh, they're always like a blast. Um, Hoodfoot. (laughs) Fucking, oh my God. Hoodfoot is like my little big brother (laughs) because, uh, I've been wrestling longer than him. (laughs) <laughs> so he's my little brother older, yeah. but, but hoodfoot is older than me so he's my big brother and um we uh like that that's legit family man like uh we travel together a lot of times uh joseph schwartz like schwartzy and, and and uh randy west are like uh two of like the greatest humans on this planet and like uh have always been like big supporters of mine and uh, have always uh, been on this journey with me, and um, uh, uh, they had a, a big hand in training Hoodfoot. So, like when he brought them around, uh, when uh, they brought him around, uh, I started to see Mo and like uh, get to know him. And we're like we're brothers, man. We just we, when me and Hoodfoot are in the room together, like we're fucking menaces. Uh, we got to be separated. We do too much. <laughs> He's insane as well, isn't he? He's, uh, he's cra- crazy as hell. Just crazy take, as hell. Just, and where do you Bro bleeds buckets, and yeah. I'm so fucking jealous because, like, I'll take all the glass, and you'll you won't see a fucking a speck scratch. of blood on me. <laughs> they make fun of me, dude. Uh, Remington Roar says he's like, dude, uh, your skin's made of vibranium, <laughs> like you're from the Black Panther, bro. And I was like, fuck, bro, it feels like it. I take all the glass, nothing. Hoofa gets a paper cut. He's bleeding gallons. I'm like, God <laughs> damn, dude. <laughs> um, and it's weird you brought the, the last two people I was going to mention you brought up, um, which one was Randy West. Ah, uh, Randy. Uh, I call I call her Randall. Uh, <laughs> she's known me since I was like four years old. Um, she used to uh, talk about, uh, she still tells people this, about how uh, since I was a baby, I was a better worker than most of the guys on the show. Uh, during intermission, I'd be like a little kid getting in the ring. I'd climb on the top rope and do moon salts and land on my feet and do like all types of tumbling in the ring and stuff. And she uh, <laughs> she would always uh, uh, watch me and stuff during the shows. Um, and then like growing up and uh, getting to like work with her and wrestle her a bunch uh, has been like super crazy and surreal but like i said like that's family like people who are um huge huge like parts in the machine yeah. that is mm3 for sure okay and then the last one up um is Schwartzy. oh man that's my homie man like uh he used to wrestle for my dad um uh, like uh, way back in the day when he had like a, when he was a completely different character. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, and he, a lot of people didn't really like him at that time or like in general, like uh, back then. And like, I always just like vibed with him and like, we always just like kind of maintained being homies, like through all of everything and all of life. And uh, we've, it's awesome to see how much we we've been able to like grow together and like that's like real friendship right there and that and like that's what you that's what you want to see from like like your mates like uh they grow as you grow like we don't want to outgrow each other we want to see each other grow and thrive and like they're huge huge supporters of mine and like always making sure i'm making the best decisions for like me and like making putting me in like good positions to to succeed like I got to wrestle Paul London uh, yeah. uh, on a flop house show. Uh, like Schwartzy uh, and and Randy are up there in my top five forever people for sure. Um, and we've got Schwartzy coming on next as well. Uh, nice, oh yeah. yeah. Um, he's, he's got back to us because there was um he's obviously he's got stuff going on in his personal life. Not bad things. He's um he's doing well. Mm. But he's, he's a bit busy with what he was doing. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's coming on um, next, which will be nice. Um, he, his exact words were though, "I can only come on if I am Schwartzy." Though, and I went, "Yeah, no, that's what I want." <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and then the final question we ask um, on it for everyone is dream matches. So first is a dream match of someone that's still wrestling now. And then the mm-hmm. second one is dream match of someone that's either passed away or retired. Um, well, the second one's easy. So uh, I got to think on this first one for a second. <laughs> um a dream match of someone that's still wrestling huh oh it's normally the other way around and uh, that people struggle they don't you know they just don't they normally kind of take a while for the other way yeah 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 i think it's because they know I, they're going like oh it's just normally it's they go straight to a WWE guy or something like that um Whereas it's the opposite for you, which is nice. <laughs> so. I like I dude, like you see the people I've wrestled yeah, on my eight matches. It's, 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 a struggle, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's uh man. Uh if I I saw you wrestled the spirit squad eh? I, just in front of me, you've wrestled everyone. <laughs> <laughs> spirit squad. I have wrestled the spirit squad. <laughs> um shit, man. Who uh, wrestling today. Well, damn, he's kind of not wrestling because I probably said would have been like probably like Kenny Omega. He classes. I, he's injured, isn't he? He stays wrestling. Yeah. 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 So so Kenny, but if he's on the injury reserve, uh, it would have to be. Um, uh, it would have to be Kazuchika Okada. Bad wrestlers, all don't you? <laughs> yeah, you might. I don't want to wrestle some slouch. <laughs> <laughs> you might get, a, you know, he's just left New Japan just before he ends up in AWWE. You might be able to get a match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm really good at sneaking in there before people get picked up. You, you see it on the list, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Spirit Squad's still blowing my mind, anyway. Um, and then um, the retired wrestler. That's easy. Um, <laughs> It's Hayabusa, man. <laughs> like I'd wrestle Hayabusa if um, if I could. Um, but uh, uh, wrestlers that are living but uh, no longer wrestling that I'd like to wrestle um, would for sure be. Oh man. Hmm. Yeah, Muda's done. I, I'd have to say it'd be Muda. Yeah, bro, you wouldn't have been able to answer that. Like, well, yeah, Muda's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that he was... just made the list. Just made the list. Both so many people wrestling. come out of retirement. It's so hard to like... Yeah, like, you don't if, know they're, who's who. if they're still alive, they're still wrestling some way. Uh, look, if I actually could wrestle and was a good wrestler, the ones I would probably pick, it would be Kabashi. Um, but I'd mm-hmm. be also scared to fight Kabashi at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then the one I'd, I'd really want is Stan Hansen. Just oh, dude, yeah, that's a good me. one. It absolutely <laughs> murdered me. <laughs> but it'd be fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of this. Um, so we've got your Instagram, Twitter on the, the screen. Is there anything else you'd like mm-hmm. to plug? Uh, um, uh, plug everything Michigan Pillars. Uh, uh, you can catch us on IWTV. You can catch uh, our Wrestling Life Etc. episode on IWTV. Mm-hmm. You can also catch us on Alec Price's Talking Garbage on IWTV. Um, Pillars on every ICW No Holds Barred show. Tune into those on every H2O uh, show, Hardcore Hustle Organization. Um, uh, Yeah, man. uh, Pillars and ICW coming uh, across the pond to your neck of the woods. Uh, we, we're partnering. Completely mentioned. Let's probably should talk about that. That's pretty important. We're gonna talk about that. That's really important. <laughs> we're gonna plug that. Um, yeah, we're partnering with Rise, and we're gonna come over. Um, I know we're doing the Ultraviolet Vortex, and those shows are always fucking nuts because we never know who's wrestling who yeah. until the music hits. So that's always a good time. Uh, uh, so I'm excited for that one. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, it's the, like, it's a game of death weekend. So the tournament's going on as well as, uh, they've announced a match, uh, me versus BA Rose. Uh, that's pretty that's exciting stuff. Fun for you. BA Rose. Yeah. He, I don't know if you've seen him wrestle. Uh, I have. 
But yeah, he reminds me he's got a lot of physique of roadkill. Um, but yeah, yeah that's why he, he, he's insane. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've got to uh, catch a, uh, quite a few of his matches now. I, like I told you, man, I'm a student of the game. As soon as Danny announced the match, I was like, bet. And I started doing all my research on B.A. Rose. And a match that's going to be incredible that weekend. Tommy Vendetta versus Danny Darko. Dude, um, I'm so pumped for that. Danny's one of these people like Hoodfoot that you just flick him and he'll bleed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like the card's insane. You got to play Atticus Kogars coming over. Um, with one of my Atticus versus Clint. Yeah, one of my favorite wrestlers of all uh, time. Atticus Kogar. Um, just an incredible. Um, Danny Demanto obviously running the company. Abdullah Kabashi, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Him, they're fighting Iceman and his son. It's yeah. just going to be incredible. Incredible weekend, yeah. and then obviously he said ultra violent vortex. No one knows what's mm-hmm. gonna happen. Um, absolute fuckery, probably. Yeah, the only thing that's announced for ultra violent vortex is an IWTV match with Cruel. Oh, yeah, 